Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Um, as you can see from the title, it's about Ryan's, aka Node Zero's response to uh, the latest community inquiries made by some YouTubers, uh, other people just asking questions of um, on Twitter and the stream, the dev stream of late. So I hope you've been well. Uh, I just came back from work, so I'm really tired, but I still wanted to make this video for you guys and give my thoughts on his replies because he replied about 60 points that he gave to, well, everyone basically, but sort of directed at uh, Z's video. Um, if you're curious about that, I'll put the video in the description, but I'm sure that if you're sort of connected in the Gears community, <laughs> you, uh, you will have seen it by now. Anyway, let's get into it. Uh, Ryan starts off with saying, for multiplayer, we have lots of post-launch expansions coming. We call them operations. They launch roughly three months after each other. We will do more minor updates for smaller title updates, but different than Gears 4. The large updates happen with operations. <clears throat> so Rip Jarab says, I hope that you take that video that Z made and just apply it. Uh, all of it other than center screen. I don't know, like, I don't know what this point me and so many others give tons of input about what ha needs to happen to get, make Gears of War great. And it feels like it was just spit on, lol. He says, I highly respect the effort that he puts into the analysis. There was some great insights in video. Some of the differences were introduced in previous games and it's a bit unfair to ascribe just to Gears 5. Some of the analysis is incorrect, but I still respect the process. Well, yeah, I mean, he's not a developer. Uh, Z, I mean. So there's obviously gonna be some of it that's, uh, that's wrong. Um, so I'm not gonna read the entire thing, but I will read uh, Ryan's re responses. So he says, first point is an actual thank you. Uh, thanks for taking the time to go through the detail and doing real timing. So let's get into it here. Uh, first point. Second is you were quite clear that this is a franchise critique and unfortunately due to the number of Gears 5 examples, I think it's times made I think it at times made it look like a lot of these changes were new to Gears 5. Movement speed. While you've shown the sh some of the differences, you haven't shown all of them. Gears 2 introduced a slower movement speed, but Gears 3 returned to the core Gears 1 movement speed. Uh, Gears 1, 3, 4, and 5 all use the same core movement speed. Probably just looks different in the older games, in my opinion, because of the frame rate, right? When you have faster frame rates or slower frame rates, it gives the illusion. Uh, that things are going faster or slower. So it really doesn't really match up. And he says, the delay after the roll versus out of strafe. You kind of conflate these two subjects. The delay out of the roll was introduced in 4 due to a lot of feedback about the lack of punishment with, for missed rolls. It's a very small change. It isn't new to Gears 5. I mean, I suppose uh, I've watched Z's video, but I haven't really, um, I was never really against um being punished for roles or having someone be punished for roles. I remember in Gears of War 4, uh, it was very easy to come out of a role. So you could roll into, you know, a direction and hold down A and you just slide into cover as soon as you end the role, which, you know, could be overpowered. But at the same time, if you knew about it, then you were prepared to use it against someone or to defend yourself against it. Um, in, th in this game, though, in Gears 5, there's a lot of things that are just like, they just feel off. The combination of certain things just feel off. Um, the roadie strafe. I think you made a good point here. I don't think we've landed this as well as we should. I mean, roadie strafe is kind of like a technique of the past. It might have worked in Gears 4 competitive, but okay. Um, roadie strafe and miss rolls are not the same delay. These are two different systems. I take your point that rolls could be looked at uh, like they're an attack move, but they are also what happens in an error. Which way you interpret them determines what next steps what the next steps are well we got the franchise the vast majority of players looked at them as miss rolls yeah and most of the time you know when you roll you don't intend to but i understand z who's a like gear one gears one purist pretty much um in his experience you know when you miss roll uh or if you roll that could be used as an attack right to the side roll and get someone behind a cover or something um <clears throat> i'm going to take this note and see if i can come up with a way to think about them differently that can bring some of what you're describing back. Wall cancel. This was introduced in Gears 2 and carried into Gears 3. After two games using your style of movement with Gears 4, we did not feel that we could close the door to all the people that learned to play this way. See, it, it, it starts to go downhill pretty quick here for me, honestly, because a lot of the things that Ryan will start saying are things like that. Um, 
you know, <laughs> close the door on people who learn to play a certain way. Except they, f you know, threw everything out the window with Gears 4 and made a whole new tuning for Gears 5 that the majority of players who love the game and have learned the game don't like. So I'm not sure how he thinks this comes across, but that's how it comes across to me. We have done more to dampen this style of play than previous games. Gears 4 introduced the wall cancel cooldown to limit it. Yes, uh, which you updated time and time again based on feedback by people who don't use that sort of thing. Gears 5 reduced the slide speed, which I didn't even know until now. It would be nice to know beforehand. It isn't enough to return to Gears 1, but we've been looking for a solution. We don't think we have it yet. You don't need to look for a solution, in my opinion. Um, just get used to it. Like, this is not Gears of War 1. It's not Gears of War 2. It's not Gears of War 3. Uh, it should have the same core of it, but it doesn't need, like, the same things, you know? It doesn't need the same exact mechanics. High sensitivities, again, this was introduced in Gears 3. Once players had been given this freedom, we felt with Gears 4 that we needed to show that we were respecting the fans that had stayed with the franchise. Yeah, but they're just sensitivities at the end of the day. You know, you can get used to those. Um, in Gears 3, they kind of broke the game uh, in many ways because you'll see later on, he talks about hitboxes and I won't get into it now, but higher sensitivity with the wall bouncing, it just, it, it could break the characters. They would just turn into balls and it was uh, super whack. Well, some players preferred lower sensitivity, some did not. We felt that with Gears 4 closing the door and then wasn't an option. The online popularity of Gears 3 was so much more than Gears 1 or 2. Yeah. I mean, it had more modes and things and okay. <laughs> kind of a weird, uh, weird reasoning. With Gears 5, we wanted to design a system that would make players want to reduce, in, uh, reduce their sensitivity. Like, I don't get it. On one hand, you're saying... We don't want to close the door on those people, but we're also going to design a system that m would make players want to reduce their sensitivity. We added recoil. Yes, you did, but you also added an enormous amount of aim assist to the game, uh, which completely goes against the recoil. I don't think that we have been as aggressive as we could to introduce a higher end skill gap with more recoil. This is due to trying to get a single tuning in. That's not true. I know that's what you're saying, but... All you had to do, in my eyes, was take Gears 4, you know, add that recoil system or whatever you put for the rifles, and you were pretty much done. Uh, it didn't need all this stuff around it. Shot spamming. I agree with you. I can't stand the Nasher shot spamming. That's why we reduced the clip of the Nasher, increased the reload speed, and reduced the amount of ammo you get. Yeah. Great. So, because you don't like shot spamming, and you don't play versus as much as everybody else does we have to now deal with the fact that you can barely handle a 1v3 which was most one of the most exciting and probably uh, uh gratifying ways of killing a team is you know a 1v1 okay that's a 1v1 a 1v2 once you're a good player once you got positioning it ain't all that right it, you'll get used to that sort of thing pretty quick but fighting off 1v3s and stuff that's like a completely different ball game doesn't matter what tuning you're playing on, just the fact that you have to dodge three people at once and kill them in the same time. Uh, that was the skill gap there between people. But now that you run out of ammo so quickly, um, you basically taken out one person, taking two shots to down them. You have four shots left for two other people. Good luck. You have to reload while you're doing that. But while you're reloading, you have to pay attention to the active system. Like you have to pay attention to the actual active, which takes your mind off the fight. And it's just, yeah, this whole dynamic isn't working the way I think he wants it to work. Um, and I, yeah, that's just my experience anyway. That's what I notice when I watch people and watch myself and my own, my own clips. Um, this meant that players could, that spam shots would ultimately lose if their opponent, opponent could, get, uh, could get them to waste shots in a sustained fight. There are no sustained fights anymore. Uh, the style and the tone. While I prefer a darker and grittier tone, it turns out that any map that w any map that made any map made that's brighter and sunny gets picked about two to one ratio over the dark ones. We felt that with Gears Five, we returned a bit to the darker maps. That's nonsense. That's just that's just nonsense. I don't know where you. I know you get this data, Ryan, but it's all about map design. Like people don't care if it's dark or not 
Raven Down was dark. And people played Raven Down 24-7. Um, people played Checkout because it was a great map. People played Foundation because it was a good map. People played Reclaimed because it was a good map. Had nothing to do with the brightness of the map. But, all right, if you say so. Uh, the map you show in your videos from Gears 4. No idea. I'm not going to put that on. Melee, yes. Our melee is easier to use than before. We feel that it has helped us take a step forward. It was tuned hot, OP, for launch to showcase the feature. We are currently tuning it into a more skillful level, which will be released shortly. Like, just reading that blows my mind as a, a you know, serious rank player, whatever you want to see me as. Um, I love the competitiveness in Gears, but the fact that you just said that you don't want to close the, the door on people, how they learn to play, but then you introduce a new feature to the game so massively overpowered and exploit heavy it just shows you are trying to push us into a direction that none of us really want to go people who want to play ranked anyway i i, I don't really care about people who are casually playing the game because they go either way in my eyes anyway they they don't know any better they don't know what happened before they don't know what the game was like before uh, so this is a classic case to me of if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And now you broke it even more. So now you have even more work that is out there to be done. Melee target lock. This was introduced, as you say, in Gears 2. Something that had been with the franchise that long, we felt uh, reluctant to change. But why? With the amount of what we've learned by making a new melee system, we feel more confident crafting this space. But why? No one wants to melee people. This is a shooting game. All right. It's about if you're going to melee someone, it's a last resort sort of thing. This should not be a main tactic to play the game. But I, the more I read this, and I've read this a couple of times now, the more I read this, the more I realize how like TC is pretending to understand what made Gears super competitive between people. And they want to make it all an even playing field. That will never happen. The better Gears players will abuse and exploit every single thing you put in the game that you think, you think will somehow, you know, make it better. It won't. It won't. It happened on Judgment. It happened everywhere. When Gears of War Judgment got released, the Lancer was super overpowered. And the melee was super overpowered. People would just walk around, melee, and then Lancer like four bullets into you, you'd be dead. It had no recoil. Um... There were no actives, of course, but it was super fast, like a rate of fire and just just crazy strong. Um, but as soon as they nerfed it, people just used the Marksa because in cover, you could still kill people, you know, with with the Marksa. Not in any other gun. You couldn't hit anybody when they were in cover. But with the Marksa, you could just angle through the wall and you'd be done. Um, it, Gears is very exploit heavy. So when you change these very big fundamentals to versus you're playing with fire you're playing with fire and if you are a developer that has only made one gears game so far and failed in most cases to make it good because it took you i don't know 15 updates to get competitive tuning on gears 4 in a decent place um which online was absolute dog shit part of my french it was just dog shit to watch it was dog shit to play with and play with it was better in a competitive atmosphere because gunfights lasted longer, but it, it wasn't consistent at all. It, it had this hold your shot mentality of people playing on the inches in a gunfight where if you didn't cross this inch, you would not get one shot. And as soon as you walk an inch further, you just blow up or your head would pop off. Like people consider that skill, but to me, it's just luck. It's just, you know, you flip a coin and the game picks whoever wins. Um, anyway, I'll continue. The lunch. This is really the first mechanic new to Gears 5. The criticism is totally fair and we are looking at how to make this deeper. M make it deeper? Again, push this pushing for melee oriented gameplay. I, I just don't see it. Gib range. We have actually reduced the gib range versus uh, free. It's a very small amount we've brought it in, but you don't say how much. In Gears 4, we've tried to bring it in even further, but then we get your Nashers broken from the community. That is, now you're, now you're um, conflating us saying your Nash is broken because we had to play on 30 hertz servers at 60 frames, which you know, Ryan, isn't going to work as well as what we have now. Um, 
Like that's just nonsense. You know, just just saying, oh, this is this is our argument why we did it this way, and if we did it any further, you'd be complaining even more. Like no, 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 no. You can't just do that. Gib range. I completely agree with you about bringing in closer the feedback from the community. Uh, writ um, large, writ large has not been positive when we bring it in. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Because a lot of people don't know what they're talking about because they don't look at the background information of how the game handles stuff. But also, that's never explained, right? It's very rarely ever explained. And I mean, even now in Gears Five with all these crazy server issues, I've always said, do not mess with tuning if it doesn't work online, right? And if you're gonna make a game for just LAN, then forget about online, because it's never gonna happen. And I mean that for the people watching too. If you're not investigating and researching just the basics of netcode, which is the way the game handles how I play against you and you play against me and other people, um, then don't bother commenting on this sort of thing because that's what ultimately is the mechanic. It's the medium that lets us play together. If you don't understand the medium, I don't think you can give you know decent feedback um and it's not as complicated i make it sound complicated probably but it, it's really not uh damage and gib i feel it's on oh wait damage gears 5 have gears 5 has the weakest shotgun since gears 1 one of the reasons that gears 1 was weak was what was its pellets pattern was random starting with gears force competitive tuning we've been reducing the damage significantly over previous products yeah okay well yeah competitive tuning sure but this is not competitive tuning, is it? Damage and Gib. I feel it's unfair to attribute the differences between Gears 1 and where we are now to Gears 5. We have moved closer to Gears 1 in the previous games. It, this was intentional. We may not be there yet, but your video makes it look like we made a big change. Big change this way. Excuse me. Um, yeah, I suppose. If, if you watch the video, you'll probably get it. Damage follow for the Nash here. We don't have that much work, range, to, range to work with. It has to go from little damage to more damage and ultimately up to a Gib. This means that very little damage in distance will change the damage profile. We're between a rock and a hard place. I mean, I agree. It, it is a very hard um, balance to find. I think they're in a pretty good place, except obviously, you know, us w when we move around really quick, uh, it's just it's hard to hard to place a shot, I suppose. Um, and I liked I liked the pellet system, like seeing every single individual pellet. But I think it takes away from the experience. It just really look, it looks really boring to see pellets instead of like blood splatters on a person and like seeing all the uh, uh, the holes, so to speak, and just going off that because that's the skill of itself. And I think maybe they should make it so, if, if, if it was my choice, right? They should make it so that um, the pellets show up in a kill cam and in the, in the actual game, it's just blood or sparks. Uh, given it... Given the positive change here, I wish you had given us the benefit of the doubt in our desire to get towards a better CQB experience. Stopping power. We did not introduce this. We massively reduced it in four from three. Uh, moving effects from damage into stopping power is one of the ways we keep trying to reduce the lancer damage. Yeah, I mean, you guys reduced it, but it was still, I don't know if you're talking about competitive tuning or core tuning, but it was still the same experience for people, uh, including myself. Support fire. We try to keep the lancer. We try to get the lancer into a support role. Players also want a single tuning. We need something that works across the spectrum if you want a single tuning. Alienating 90% of the user base just to please 10% isn't an option. See, reading this, it's it's almost as if he only applies this this type of logic whenever it suits him, because everybody at some point or another has gotten annoyed with where a certain weapon is. And the Lancer is a stable weapon of the game, yes, but uh, the, the combination of high rate of fire with an active reload and damage increase for Gears 4, right? Uh, just made that thing stupid strong if you had good aim. Um, and then the damage multiplier to the head, it, like you guys, Ryan especially, you're not mentioning that when the game released Gears 4, uh, the Lancer was in an okay spot, right? It gave more damage to the head, when you had, you know, when you hit headshots. But then what you did was you tuned the Lancer to not give the headshot bonus anymore and just give body damage bonus, which is ridiculous. You're not rewarding people to hit their shots on the head anymore. And I, I, like, these are all things I still remember to this day. And I'm tired of bringing stuff like that up, but 
I'm seeing it here and it's just this disconnect in my eyes. It's just the same, same old thing. Uh, anyway, let's move on. Uh, let's see support fire. Um, that being said, oh, by the way, this alienating 90% of the user base just to please 10%. This has been a thing ever since esports came around because a lot of esports got m way more attention just online in general than the rest of the player base. When we were all complaining about the Hammerverse problem, that it was way too OP, they fixed it like six months later. They acknowledged it six months later or something. It's ridiculous, man. You know, like, get real. Anyway, that being said, we've continued to push the Lancer's damage uh, further down in both Gears 4 competitive and Gears 5 versus Gears 3. Again, Gears 4 competitive. Damage fall of on Lancer. We removed the damage fall of in 5 right before launch to fix another issue. Here we go again. By the way, I played Gears 4, I made videos on Gears 4, Ryan, and the damage was no, there was no drop off to me. It was still the same in Gears 4 core anyway. Maybe you're talking about competitive, but I don't read that here. This means that the Gears 5 Lancer will be much weaker than pra basically pretty much any in the series. If you say so, but if you're wrong, then we'll see. Removing the damage uh, fall off was a mistake. Gears 4 had fall off all the way through. Okay. Network quality. I don't think that you're really advocating adding lag back into the game in order to increase the skill gap, are you? Yeah, this is something I see a lot of Gears, um, Gears 1 purists say uh, that, um, you know, Gears 1 was may way more skillful. You had to time your shots better. You had to lead your shots. Like, that's all nonsense. That was just lag. <laughs> you had to lead that stuff. And yes, it was skillful. It has its own skill to it. Right, but this is 2019, and no one wants to lead sh hit scan weapons uh, anymore. Like this is it's ridiculous, especially with the wall bouncing that's going on. Like, come on, man, you're basically just hoping to hit a shot at that point. Looking down over an edge, this style of relationship was brought in in Gears 3. It's not true, and added in Gears 2 as well. Attributing it to Gears 5 is a little bit unfair. Gears 3, they decided that shooting the cover below you as you tried to lead over was bad. This had knock-ons. I don't think either solution works. Okay, if you say so. Vertical combat. I take your point here, but again, this is a relationship established in earlier games. Attributing it to Gears 5 is a bit misleading. I think it is a great illustration of the problems to solve, but solving it in Gears 1 ways uh, has other problems. Yes, but it's still a problem. Um, as I've shown in my tutorials. Aim assist. Actually, it's collision uh, boxes. What you think is aim assist in the portion of the video is actually a hitbox issue, right? It's, it's not just a thing. It's an issue now. A choice needs to be made when designing shooting combat. One, do you shoot only the visible part of the target or do you have consistent hotboxes between targets uh, or hitboxes? Uh, and this is the part where he, he talks about the hitboxes, as you can tell. And I've made a video long ago. And I'll, I'll put it in the background um, uh, talking about or talking, just showing the hitbox problems. And people always call me crazy that Classic Baird, Savage Cantus, Anya, all these characters didn't have the right hitboxes, uh, even on their model themselves, which gave them a huge, adva huge advantage to play. And everyone was always like, well, you had one crowd that, that said, no, no, he's right or we're right because it is broken. Uh, but you had the crowd that constantly played those characters that just didn't care because they just didn't care, right? Uh, that would just constantly play it. And Epic never fixed it, which is their fault. But, in, in, you know, in Gears 4 and in, in, in Gears Judgment and Gears 5, like, it needs to be consistent. So we decided in Gears 4 and Gears UE that it was important to have a consistent hitbox. Auto Autocorrected above to hotboxes. This was something we had heard from our competitive community. Like, it's just... Everyone has said that, Ryan. It's everyone that's ever paid attention to hitboxes, but whatever. This means smaller models have hotboxes outside a rendable mesh. This means that when you, are fire, when you fire a sniper rifle near them, it will hit because this hitbox is meant to capture most characters. The smaller the character, the larger the gap. The reason the chin is included is that some characters have a lower head. We need to make sure that we get all the characters. Um, otherwise, we get videos of people hitting the head and not getting headshot. Hitboxes. Gears 3 had inconsistent hitboxes that also didn't line up with the characters. There you go. We felt we made more, a more significant improvement in unifying them with Gears 4. Yeah, you did. You did. I have no idea what they look like, but you did. Hitboxes slash auto-aim. Attributing this difference to first 
first to auto aim and then to gears 5 isn't accurate. Aim assist, aim assist is only enabled in more casual modes. It also isn't as strong, like more casual modes. Are you saying King of the Hill, something that before escalation was ever a thing, was the most competitive mode next to execution? Like, it's just like, no, we're not casuals. People who play rank King of the Hill are not casuals. They're really, really sweaty. Okay. Like even the pros will tell you. Uh, but if you listened, of course. <clears throat> um, it also isn't as strong as you described. Most of what you were identifying was just a different in hitboxes. Network lag, saying the same thing. Muzzle fire slash not aim assist. Some of what you're showing also, uh, also showing that you describe as aim assist is that the bullets are coming from the muzzle. This means aiming a bit to the right of them or the head will still have the bullet pass through their head. Muzzle shooting. This was introduced to Gears 2. Uh, in Gears 2. It's a bit unfair to ascribe this to Gears 5, but your examples are here. You call it auto-aim, but it's the same shooting mechanisms that have been in the last four games. Marks up. This has nothing to do with auto-aim. You are showing the recoil after the shot. The first shot is hitting the larger hitbox that you can't see. Just think about what you're hearing here. <laughs> you're hitting the hitbox you cannot see. <sighs> and the second after the recoil of the weapon. There are, there's no auto-aim changing anything here. Power weapons more powerful. Uh, the strength of the rifle and the shotgun had gone down versus the last two games, not up. <clears throat> well, that's not true, Ryan. Um, actually, when you say power weapons more powerful and the strength of the rifle, if you're talking about rifle as in Lancer, you specifically told me that the rifle is the same damage as Gears 4, but it has less rounds. So how has this gone down exactly? Is it because it doesn't have active damage anymore? We made some cool weapons because we thought they were cool. The OP ones are generally only included in more casual modes. Just again, just disconnect. Power weapons and execution. We are working on a fix to specify a different set of map uh, weapons to, for execution to bring the power down. This is a known issue and we are working on it. Great. The Lancer GL is a power weapon and never intended as a replacement for the base Lancer. It is more powerful. You talk about it as if we intended it to be a loadout weapon. It isn't a loadout weapon. It's a pickup power weapon. I mean, that's not that's not a that's a non-answer really, because if you play horde, it's a it's a it's a main weapon to use. But if you play versus, it's a pickup. But you get so much ammo, it might as well be a loadout lancer. Let's be real here. I can probably kill from just top of my head. It downs people in about twenty-five shots. I think you get about one hundred twenty bullets, one hundred fifty bullets. I can kill about six, seven people uh, with that thing without my rockets. Uh, but it's the same thing with my Lancer because usually before, you know, after I kill seven people, I usually die because, you know, eventually I'll get flanked or something. So that's again, disconnect between interpretation of what Z is saying. Probably flashbang. The flashbang, uh, has been tuned. This was the first time it had been released and we thought it might've been chewed a bit too much, but we wanted feedback first. We have adjusted it. Like it just, people have quit this game over the flashbangs, Ryan. Something as petty as that. Why didn't you see that coming? Stun. This stun was introduced to Gears 3. It was combined on the smoke. Ascribing a stun, grenade stun to Gears 5 is a bit unfair. Standing up and down. Okay, so in this example, Z was talking about in the older games, you could sit in cover, aim, and crouch while you're aiming. You can't do that in Gears 5. Martyr. I'm not sure whether it was Gears 2 or Gears 3 that introduced the martyr feature. It was one of those. We felt that supporting the feature was important to establish the continuity and meet fan expectations. I mean, no big deal there. A lot of people don't have grenades that want to die, so. You make some good points about it, enough to make me think about a solution to this problem. The good news is that it's a very rare anyway. Yeah, he's probably talking about the martyr thing. Um, tear dropping. I think you've got a solid point here. Others have made similar points. When we have some time, we'll look into improving the torque. I love the bounced and arced shots. Rant, or end, I ran out of time. I have to go, but big respect for putting, you, uh, for putting the video together. The passion and the attention to detail was great. I wish you didn't slag us so much, but still great video. Yeah, I mean, these are good responses, but I'm, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here and say, like, this is nothing new. I mean, maybe to a lot of you guys that read this for the first time and never really analyzed this yourself, uh, this is very new and exciting. But when you reflect this to what's been done before and said before, it's basically the same thing as before. 
this is just more um you know digging a deeper hole uh eventually because now ryan is explaining how what their their um, uh, methodology i suppose is or their their ethos for gears 5 right the way they want to make the game but a lot of these changes are going completely against the core gears players uh play styles and yeah i'm talking for myself here but i'm also i'm somebody i can adapt to pretty much anything in gears it's just whether or not i will enjoy it more or not right and for me gears 2 and gears 3 uh, were um, the most enjoyable uh, experiences uh, until of course you know people started to exploit everywhere with you know gears 3 ranked they would just spawn in with retros and it just made the game really lame but it, you know it is what it is eventually people start doing that anyway uh, but that's the perspective that uh that i wanted to share with you guys uh, in terms of solutions i don't really have that much feedback uh, I, sp I spoke to b chaps and my buddy Embry the other day uh, and yeah i just uh i think if this is really the way it is and watching the dev streams and them talking about uh what they're working on now and then all these changes especially things like the lunge and the melee the fact that they actually said it was it was on purpose that they made it op like what what, what i just I, I i i can't understand it's almost like a defense response to say uh i don't have a reason for this i don't have a reason for it being better so i'll just say that it was intended uh, so yeah we don't really care that you don't like it because we didn't think of that before we released the game instead we wanted to make you mad and abuse this feature so that we can tune it down later i i don't know i don't know what to say um i'm really confused next to being tired i'm just really confused because i've said it in one of my tweets that none of this stuff was required in the old games the old games you can just pick it up and after a few weeks of playing you would understand the mechanics of the weapons it didn't require that much analysis it didn't require all the background information from the devs you can just get used to it and it was intuitive but gears 5 like all this stuff is needlessly deep uh, for no reason and when i watched the pro players react to the state that uh, escalations in with the power weapons being spawned right outside the map it, they dug themselves a hole that is so deep and they want our help to dig them out when we never asked for it and i say we i should say me but uh, i'm willing to say we in this case so that was uh 30 minutes <laughs> i hope i hope you enjoyed and um if you guys have read this yourself please leave a comment on what your perspective is on this whole thing i do read your long ass comments as well again i don't really reply to them because i'm really busy uh and i want to keep myself you know I don't want to misinterpret things or come across like a dick because I type pretty direct with people. So if you have any questions, of course, please feel free to DM me anywhere. Um, I hope you have had a really good weekend. I'm going to eat some food and uh, go to sleep because I'm dead tired. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one, man. Hopefully something good comes out of this. All right. So as always, take care of yourself and peace out. Bye bye.